So before we get into the main sessions of the free training course, video three of session A, I just wanted to have a discussion of who are we, who am I, and some explanation of the terms that we're commonly going to use throughout this course. Um, so look, if you don't care who we are, or if you're very familiar with advantage play value betting terms, maybe you can skip over this video. It's maybe of interest to people that might question, well, why would I be a source of authority on this subject? Um, whereabouts does bookie bashing come from? And perhaps some people not entirely familiar with some very common terms, phrases, and abbreviations that are used in advantage play value betting. So I am Tom Brownlee. That is my name. Um, I own Bookie Bashing, along with two other co-directors. And on the front page of Bookie Bashing, if you scroll down here, you can download the um, ebook that we have written. Just a quick ebook with a few pages that sort of describes advantage play value betting. I'm going to skip over to one of the pages now. So this is the ebook here. We've got some contents at the start. What is Bookie Bashing and who are we? So if you want a refresher, you can download this ebook from the front page and um, you can take it away so it's not on the video. But Bookie Bashing as a site is a community of advantage players that share access to trackers, tools and education and the daily intel of each other. We seek out edges and develop strategies to take advantage of the edges that we find. Now, Bookie Bashing was started in 2015 by myself and Duncan. Um, me and Duncan, if I just skip forward, this is an explanation of our backgrounds. I am Tom. I'm a chartered civil engineer. I studied predictive statistics and artificial intelligence in the early 2000s in a seven-year postgraduate research project. I went on to be a chartered civil engineer as a consultant to the government where we looked at infrastructure spend on, amongst other projects, the M25 road network. During um, the 2000s, uh, I also played a lot of poker quite successfully, helped me pay my way through my studies. Um, and I used to post a lot of equity graphs um, uh, about decision-making in poker because that was my speciality in my... Um, postgraduate it was the mathematics of decision making okay um so from posting equity graphs on poker sites forums online i started looking at sports betting i would post sports betting equity graphs i got involved in some early um syndicates some groups of advantage players and professional bettors who would pool their resources and work as a team um, in various different aspects of advantage play and sports betting. I'd be in shop teams that were doing coupons long before Bookie Bashing ever existed. And we realized there was a gap, me and um, Duncan. So me and Duncan have been in the same sports betting team for coming up to maybe 15 to 20 years. Duncan's a chartered accountant with a degree in physics with astrophysics in 2002. He says he read a book about poker, put £40 on the table, withdrew 120 and that's been his bankroll ever since. Um, he ventured off into match betting in 2006, but this evolved into value betting when he realised that there was equity being left on the table. Um, learning about arbitrage and hedging in the mid-2000s, I think Duncan realised that whilst there's a small amount of income to be made, from those techniques, there was a much larger amount of income to be made from value betting. And so that's the that's kind of the route that we took into this. We were involved with a lot of different shop groups, but we were aware in 2013, 14, 15, that whilst people um, were aware of the same amount of information and there was utility in that information being shared, there wasn't a real central area where people could come and pull the information. And one of the fears that people had was eavesdroppers, if you like. If you opened up a um, site available to everyone and then two or three people post from this group, two or three people post from that group, the fear really was that there would be lurkers, eavesdroppers, people that never posted but just looked out for the information and took it without contributing anything. So for this reason, bookie bashing was formed. 
we charged a nominal fee uh, because it was important that there was a barrier to entry. And from that nominal fee, we, re we reinvested that money into intelligence from the shops, coupons, OCRing coupons, um, sharing strategies, site infrastructure, things like this. So this is what happened in 2015. Do um, myself and Duncan were not really IT guys. We're not really website designers either. And in fact, if anyone was around in 2015, 16 and saw the site, it looked like we were pretty amateur when it came to website design. But Bookie Bash actually grew in popularity, especially as we started to find some edges that were particularly profitable. All of a sudden, the £10 a month nominal fee that we were charging back there didn't really make a lot of sense, simply because a few people were joining, paying the £10 a month, and then they'd be using the information that they would send out to 50 runners around the country to make thousands a day. As, uh, on top of that, we had a lot of edges that did rely on uh, the currency of odds, and we were posting up static images of odds back in those days because we didn't know anything different so we then partnered with a third director and this is lee uh, lee speaks eight languages that is english php python java html sql javascript c plus plus he's um very much um an expert in it and was able to build the trackers the tools the site that we now see at Boogie Bashing. Um, and so we've come a long way since 2015. And it's now 2023 when I record this video. And we're approaching somewhere around the maturity that we wanted at, um, when we first started off. So as we first started off, we really had a forum and then we would post a few JPEGs. Now in 2023, we have, I think at last count, 27 tools and trackers and calculators, different sports. Everything is live, running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The amount of profit people are making from the site is considerably more than it was in the early days. And so we again, we have a barrier for entry. We are an absolute premium product. We have a lot of people making a lot of money. And for that reason, we charge a premium subscription at Bucky Bashing. If you skip backwards a little bit in this... Um, in this ebook, excuse me for a second whilst it is, um, we do sort of uh, have a who are we for? Um, so who is Bookie Bashing for? Um, our members come from different backgrounds, including organized shop betting syndicates, which really was the start, professional gamblers, market makers, excuse me, I've skipped forward, um, senior in ex industry traders. Uh, we've got like heads of industry um, that are Bookie Bashing members. We've got professional poker players and independent bookmakers. Brick and mortar casino shops. I've just noticed there's no N in the independence. That bugs me. I'm going to have to get that fixed. And people that have built up their bankroll. A lot of people have built it up from match betting and casino wagering backgrounds and have found that those particular um, av revenue streams have died down a little bit and wanted to find something more. So we welcome all of these people at Bookie Bashing with the single stipulation that they understand that with advantage play, capital is at risk. You can place all the right bets at all the right times and these bets can lose. All of our trackers show long-term positive ROI, but they are also all subject to frequent short-term losing runs. And so we do make it clear that there are groups of people that we are not for. Um, and if you think that you might fall under one of these categories, it is important that you think very hard about whether you want to move into investment in strategies such as advantage play and value betting because it is not for everybody especially this first one if you do not have a basic understanding of variance risk and bankroll management then we would rather you did not sign up so even if we just take away bookie bashing from this equation Advantage play value betting may not be for you if you do not have a basic understanding of variance, risk, and bankroll management. We would first recommend that people go and learn these strategies. A lot of people, especially those that come from the risk-free or low-risk backgrounds, will be used to churning out very frequent, um, probably low amounts of profit, often, that mostly or never loses when it comes to advantage play and value betting it's the other way around especially 
when we look at the average odds that we're betting at, which tends to be odds against, it means that more often than not we're losing. In fact, when it's horse racing, when it's golf, the vast majority of the time we're losing. Being able to understand this and variance and risk and bankroll management and not staking too high and not getting caught up in the psychological warfare that some people can experience in advantage playing value betting is critical. And if it's going to affect you psychologically, perhaps it's not the game for you. If you're going to bet with money you cannot afford to lose, don't sign up. Um, we had somebody sign up. We are, at the moment of recording this video, £99 a month. We had someone sign up. They said that their bankroll, their entire bankroll was um, £200. And so they've used half of it for the bookie bashing sign up um, uh, for one month. And then they wanted to see what they could do with the other half. We ended up um, getting in touch with this guy and refunding his money. We said, we'd, we'd rather not have you. This isn't for people that have £200 in the bag. This isn't for people that cannot afford to lose what they, what they have when they sign up. Okay, We would probably rather um, you had a look at the tools and trackers, had a look at how much we cost. And I think really the minimum bankroll you'll be looking at is four figures. And we do discuss bankroll in the next training course. We look at that in bigger detail. If you're looking for a guaranteed income to feed your family, don't sign up. Feeding your family means that you need a guaranteed income, and that means a job and a regular source of income. Yes, we have positive returns on our tools and trackers, but if you're relying on those positive terms to feed your family and pay your mortgage, and then you go on a losing run, we, that is irresponsible behavior, and we would rather you didn't sign up. And there's a lot of people that actually sign up and lose and complain quite hard. Um, one of the most important aspects of advantage play value betting is looking inwards at your own decision making and what you have done and what you can effect. If you're going to sign up and lose and then shout and blame others, then we would rather you do not sign up and join our community. Yes, we would get the money from your subscription. I personally would be better off, but you're not the community member. You're not the advantage player that we want in our community. So I would, be, I would rather be worse off and not have those people that have the inability to look inwards at their decision-making, at their strategies and, and the mathematics. Um, when we go on losing runs, we lose as well. There are horse racing losing runs. They go on. I experience them. Um, and when we go on winning runs, we don't ask people to pay more for a subscription at Bucky Bashing. So... It is the nature of the game often in gambling forums that when people are winning and doing well, they go a little bit quiet. Uh, somebody won £800,000 on a lucky 15, didn't want to speak about it on the podcast because um, really they're trying to protect an edge and they're trying to be anonymous and they don't want to popularize the, this methodology for making money. It is something known as the tragedy of the commons, again, a concept that we will come to. It's actually a bias that we have in professional betting that it's more likely to see people complaining about variance and losing runs than it is about winning runs, even though the majority of people will be winning. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there is a fine line between discussing variance and mentioning whether you've won or lost to actually being aggressive and angry. And we have had people in the past that have got emotional and aggressive and angry and again, we don't want those people at Bookie Bashing. They find their accounts with us quickly closed. And I would suggest that if that kind of emotion is going to build into your advantage play value betting, even if you're doing it outside of Bookie Bashing, to perhaps reconsider this as a strategy. Okay. So that's really who we are and who we're looking at for and who our community comprises of. Let's have a look at some of the key terms and phrases you may come across in this training course. The first one is advantage play. We call ourselves a, a community of advantage play and value betters. Those two terms share a lot of the same qualities, but they're not precisely the same. So let's just make a differentiation between them. Advantage gambling, advantage play refers to legal methods used to gain an advantage whilst gambling in contrast to cheating. So, I mean, an example of cheating is um, if you're sitting on a blackjack table and uh, you get dealt an 11 um, uh, and then you double up, 
Um, some people can cheat by quadrupling up, which you're not meant to be able to do. But if the dealer is looking at seat one and you're sat at eat eight, you could maybe squeeze a few little chips onto there to allow you to quadruple up. That's cheating. That's not within the rules. That's not morally acceptable. That's not fair game. Okay? Now, we're not talking about cheating when we talk about advantage play. We're talking about playing with an advantage that is not cheating but is completely fair. For example, another way of beating blackjack is card counting. Now, they may say they don't accept card counters, but it's not cheating. The term usually refers to house-banked casino games advantage play, but can also refer to games played against other players such as poker or sports betting against the house. Someone who practices advantage gambling is often referred to as an advantage player or an AP. Unlike cheating, which is by definition illegal, advantage play exploits innate characteristics of a particular game to give the player an advantage relative to the house or other players. So advantage play can cover casino games, it can cover... Um, poker, it can cover sports betting, it's any kind of play, even lottery games if you can find an advantage in lottery it is possible um, so any kind of wagering activity is uh, advantage play if you are the one that holds the edge, it could even be argued that the bookmakers have a bit of advantage play over the recreational customers who are mostly playing negative expectation bets with them to differentiate advantage play with value betting, a value bet is simply a bet where the likelihood of a given outcome is higher than the odds offered reflect. This means that the expected return is statistically positive. Value betting means betting only when your chances of winning are higher than the bookmaker estimated. The bookmaker thinks the probability of something is 20%, which is 4 to 1, 5.0. And you think it's 30%, a little bit more than two to one. So the probability is higher under your own modeling than the odds that you're betting at. And that is quite simply what is va uh, value betting. Um, any sports bet where you benchmarked the odds. And the benchmarking, that well, that could be anything. That could be through exchanges. It could be top price. It could be your own modeling. It could be Poisson probability distributions. We will come to benchmarking in a future video. Each way betting is a common phrase that's going to be used. Um, and this is betting on two outcomes. The first is that the selection will win. The second is that it will finish anywhere up to nth place, depending on how many places the bookmaker or exchange is offering. Each way bets, therefore, can be considered as two separate bets. A five pound each way bet on a horse to finish in the top three places is really two separate bets. One for the horse to win and one for the horse to finish first, second, or third. Of course, they are related, because if the horse wins, you win both bets. Um, but each way betting is a very common term that we're going to be using on golf, on horse racing. It can be used on football outright markets, and a number of different markets in sports betting. EV is expected value. Everything that we do as value players, advantage players, revolves around the concept of expected value value we don't just place bets this is what the twitter um nonsense tipsters do they say i think manchester united will win as an advantage player or a professional better or a value better you don't say i think manchester united will win you think i believe that the fair odds of manchester united to win are x and i believe i can get bookmaker odds of y and therefore my expected value is y divided by x the expected value is the anticipated average value of an investment at some point in the future investors use expected value to estimate the worthiness of investments so the higher the expected value the better the investment in sports betting the ev is expressed as a percentage and is calculated by back odds divided by fair odds take the back odds divided by the fair odds that is your ev that is your expected value over 100% is a positive expected value bet. Under 100% is a negative expected value bet. We always want to be betting positive. The higher, the better. Breaking down EV a little bit, the fair odds are simply the estimated true probability of an event occurring. Now, in sports betting, it's very difficult to have precision around the word true, around probability. What is the odds of Kane to score the first goal? 
there is an element of subjective reasoning in a lot of modeling that goes into sports betting. Um, so there are a large number of ways, not just one, there are a large number of ways of estimating the fair odds of an event occurring. Um, it, how we benchmark against fair odds, how we come up with the fair odds, is actually one of the more interesting and fun aspects of advantage play and value betting. And there are a lot of different techniques and methodologies. ROI and ROC stand for return on investment and return on capital. And this really is um, the barometer through which we look at how much profit we have made or how much loss we have made. They are similar but slightly different different terms. They are financial terms. Return on investment is the return from your bets relative to the amount of money you have cumulatively bet on. So let's say I have um, 10 bets today, all of which are £10. So my cumulative stake is £100. And so how much profit or loss I am at the end of the day is relative to that investment of £100. If I have £100 back, with £100 invested, that's 100% ROI. £50 back, 50% ROI. £200 back, 200% ROI. If I've lost £50, minus 50% ROI. And the return on capital is the measure of profit relative to the starting bankroll. So if I started with £1,000 and I now have £1,100, that's a 10% increase in my ROC. Variance in sports betting measures how likely you are to receive a different outcome from the probability suggested in the fair odds. So, um... Looking through betting histories, if we were to flip a coin and I offered you two to one and we were to flip it two times, um, well, it very easily could lose both times for you despite the fact you're getting great odds. If we flip it 10,000 times, then you're almost certainly going to be in profit. If you're getting two to one on a coin flip, we flip it 10,000 times, the coin is not biased and you're still down we can do a variant simulation for how likely that would be to happen. And it might suggest that that kind of scenario should only happen once in a million, 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 million years. In which case, you then ask the question, am I unlucky or is my modeling wrong and is my strategy wrong? Variance is very important as we study both betting histories and legitimacy and also working out bankroll management and how much we are going to bet on something. Because we know we have an edge, we have a bankroll of a thousand pounds. How much are we going to stick down? A hundred pounds. What's the variance? If we stick a hundred pounds down, the variance profile will be such. If we stick fifty pounds down on each bet, the variance profile will be thinner. Uh, we have to stake high enough, but we also want to be very aware of the variance so that we do not go to an unacceptable risk of busting our bankroll. We will come to a whole section on variance and bankroll management in the next session. A betting exchange is a marketplace for customers to bet on the outcome of discrete events where person A can bet with person B and the book, the exchange sorry, takes a commission out of this. Um, in efficient markets in exchanges, and an efficient market means it's highly liquid. So let's say I think Manchester United to win tonight is going to be two to one, and then somebody else can come along and say, no, I'm going to offer nine to four. And then someone else comes along and goes, no, I'm going to offer three to one. Um, what happens there is better and better offers get made until the market becomes liquid and efficient. And through the wisdom of the crowds, we can often find a very good benchmarking source for the true odds, or the fair odds. The exchanges are quite valuable as barometers of information in benchmarking true odds and fair odds, but they're not the only one. We can use best bookmaker price. We can use our own in-house modeling. Um, also, the exchanges were less likely to be restricted, and therefore they are a more desirable avenue for profit long-term. Again, we will come to how we profit on betting exchanges later in this training session. CLV is the closing line value. This is the odds of an event at the time it kicks off or at the time the horse race goes off or at the time of the first tee. And it's a very important barometer because over a large sample size, the closing line is often estimated to be the most accurate indicator of the true odds or the fair odds when a line opens 
it is least accurate, and when a line closes, it is most accurate. Therefore, because it is most accurate when it closes, our job is to beat the closing line as often as we possibly can, and that is an indicator of a successful, professional, better, and advantage player. BBP stands for Best Bookmaker Price. Across a range of bookmakers, typically three or more, the more you can get, the more uh, accurate and the more useful the BBB price is. You tend to find that if you can look at best bookmaker price, that is often very close to the fair odds or the true odds. Perhaps you need to uh, assign a little margin on top. Perhaps you need to remove outliers. But whichever way you look at it, the best bookmaker price is very often as useful or even more useful than the information we are getting from the betting exchanges. Bias is a very important concept in advantage play value betting because it is the inclination for human beings to express unreasoned judgment. Biased markets in betting exist because human beings often express unreasoned judgment. These biased markets do not stand up to purely mathematical decision-making and therefore we can target them, we can exploit them, and we can profit from them. Any market that is biased, whether it is recency bias, whether it is fave long shot bias, whether it is each way place bias, there are lots of different biases that we can target. And anything that has bias in it has the ability to be profitable for an advantage player or a value better. The Bashcast is a podcast that is available on all major podcast platforms and documents Tom Brownlee, a.k.a. me, uh, my journey through advantage play and value betting. And finally, independent proofing. This time we do have the N in independent. And this is a hugely important concept in looking at any service, database, tipster, anything in the gambling world, it is important to always have an outside arbitrator to check on the value, the content, and the returns of a betting service. And that is simply because the betting world has been populated by charlatans and fraudsters and scam artists. And quite often, a lot of people that think they have an edge and that they are winning and do not. I once was in a hospital ward and there was a man that had been given some morphine and he was high as a kite and he was very talkative and he was telling the nurse passionately about how he was going to change his life because he'd come up with this idea for beating betting markets. What had happened actually is he was just away with the fairies but he honestly truly believed whilst being away from the fairies that he was going to become a trillionaire because of this mathematical quandary that he had just solved he wasn't actually doing anything morally wrong he wasn't scamming anyone he wasn't being fraudulent he just truly believed that he had an edge where none existed and this is often the case in the twitter world in the instagram world in the tiktok world in other social medias that platforms that will be for people half my age that i've never heard of um there is the often incorrect assumption that we are profitable where no profitable strategy exists and therefore when looking at any service it is very important to make sure that they are independently proofed and that is that an outside independent arbitrator has come in and checked on the value content and returns of the betting service if you want to have a look at a very good outside independent arbitrator that does proofing I would recommend the Smart Betting Club, which um, has reviewed dozens of betting services over the last 15, 20 years. Very long running, very good quality work that they do over there. Right. So that's the end of this initial what is value betting session. And so uh, um, in the next course, we're going to look at bankroll management and variance in value betting advantage play.